Longest serving academic staffer of the University of Ibado, UI, Nigel Henry, is dead. This is announced in a statement issued on Monday by the group of academics and colleagues of the deceased at the university. Henry died at the age of 71 on Saturday at the University College Hospital Ibado. According to the statement, Harry spent more than four decades nurturing students in the various sub-disciplines of classics, especially in Greek and Latin languages and literature. Every current member of staff of the department is a former student of Henry. What a life he lived. Now joining us now uh, for, uh, from our Abuja studio is Professor Francis Ebukari, a professor of linguistics and president of Nigerian Academy of Letters. Lovely to have you join us, Professor. So we're told that he nice served... To great to have you. We're told that he served uh, for over four decades and, and still chose to remain, uh, do you say, at his post till the very last. Um, what sort of legacy has he left behind for those who were taught? I'm told that everybody there at some point or the other was taught under him. So what sort of legacy has he left behind? Well, you know, uh, Nigel uh, was a, a confounding uh, personality in the sense that uh, he had every reason to leave Nigeria, uh, to return to his uh, homeland. But somehow he fell in love with Nigeria, uh, with our food, with our people. And then, of course, uh, with the business of teaching classics. Uh, he, he was a very cerebral individual. But again, in a sense, uh, you could also say that he was uh, some uh, bohemian in, in, in style, in the sense that he defied every sense of convention in terms of his aspirations. Uh, he, he did not uh, pursue the, uh, what normal men would pursue. He wasn't interested in uh, the uh, publishing and perishing, as we, we know. He, he, wasn't, uh, he lived a very simple lifestyle. He defied conventions. But uh, when you engaged him, you, you knew that this was uh, an exceptional individual who had all that it takes to uh, rise to the peak of uh, uh, his career. He never believed in uh, the publish and perish uh, that uh, most academics uh, engaged in. He was a teacher uh, who loved uh, to engage his, uh, his students, not only in terms of uh, in the classrooms, but also in, in, in their so social life. Uh, you just need to engage him. He, he was a, a kind of person who, had, uh, who, who paid attention to his choice of words. Extremely polite in, in, uh, in engaging even those who were much, much younger and inferior to him. But again, very, when, it come to, when it came to uh, the logic, uh, logic of uh, presentation, he was a very difficult person. You, you needed to convince him in, in, in winning an argument with him. Uh, we, we always remember him for his, because... Uh, in terms of his, uh, his uh, expertise in, in, in Latin, uh, and one of the areas that uh, he always regretted that uh, the expertise, uh, the level of expertise and attention to, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to Latin, and of course also to the use of uh, language, had degenerated so much even within his lifetime. Uh, he was humble, very humble, you know, he, he yeah, yes, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, Prof, let me ask you directly, you know, it's, it's quite interesting because apparently, you did spend quite some time and you understood the man, you know. Uh, what a loss it must have been to book the students of UI and then to you personally as an individual. Tell us about your immediate feelings when you heard that uh, Nigel was dead. I, 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 was, uh, I was devastated uh, because uh, in the last one year, uh, he, it, it, things were not very easy for him because he had, uh, his contract with the university had expired. He had run out of resources, out of funds. He wanted to remain at least for another year to be able to put himself together. He, but uh, of course, uh, given the nature of uh, the system that we run now, he could not get that uh, extra one year. And I'm sure that the university was quite willing uh, within its capacity to extend that one additional year to him, giving his years of service, but he couldn't. And so he, it was really hard for him. And uh, I was personally involved in trying to get uh, a way out for him to survive. This is one of the tragedy we face, you know, as uh, uh, academics, that uh, sometimes uh, people die before their times 
because of the economic circumstances they face after retiring from an institution. This is the, what was so painful to me that after over four decades that he could just uh, face that kind of hardship uh, that he faced uh, in, the, in his last uh, one, one and a half years. How could that really have? What, the picture you have painted now, frankly, I'm almost driven to tears. How could that have happened? How couldn't, you know, four decades of his life teaching, even the current governor of Edo State, Obaseki, was his student, some uh, yes. deans of the yes. university were his students. Uh, Prof, how could this have been allowed to happen to such, such a wonderful personality? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it, it happened. And I think uh, to some extent, it's uh, the capacity of the institution to, inv in, uh, uh, to intervene uh, is uh, something that we need to, uh, to interrogate further. Uh, you know, it's uh, with the current uh, relationship that the uh, Nigerian universities have with the federal government, there is very little latitude uh, for uh, keeping an individual who has retired in the system in the payroll. But there were other ways, perhaps, within the internal resources of, a, of institutions uh, to ensure that uh, we keep a person like that, uh, keep helping to at least maintain some level of dignity uh, uh, at such a time, especially throughout the period of COVID-19. He had no income, absolutely no income and, uh, uh, from the institution. And uh, he was pretty, it was pretty a desperate situation. Uh, actually, I'm frightened, you know, when, when, I, when I see what happened to him, uh, uh, I'm frightened, you know, about the uh, the end uh, for most uh, uh, academics. Being a foreigner, again, did not make things easy for him. And uh, he had no family here except those who are uh, very loyal students, many of them, and then friends uh, with, him he, he, with whom he interacted in the staff club. I shared very many fun moments with him because he had some level of respect for me. Uh, he needed not to engage me in discussions, but we often talked about very serious issues, and uh, he gave me good advice. Um, uh, he, he, he just was not the kind of person given to our social foibles, uh, cultural foibles, you know, he, but he respected our opinions, he respected our culture, and respected us as a people, and he had a deep love for Nigeria. Uh, so that's why it was so painful for me that such kind of loyalty can uh, be so ignored by the system, you know, uh, so, so disregarded by the system. It's, uh, it was, so I, I was really shocked. And then he's a bundle of knowledge, a bundle of intellect, he had this way of connecting with uh, people who had serious uh, interest in, uh, in, in, in uh, academics. Uh, I will miss him, and I'm sure that many individuals, his students, and uh, within the staff club of the University of Ibadan, that, are, that he will be sorely missed. Oh, wow. I mean, some of what you say makes me, I might go to some of these professors that people accuse of, of trying to um, somehow shore up their future. This might be the reason why. Um, but uh, nevertheless, um, you speak of him as a bohemian, and I just want to explore that a little. To what extent, especially as a professor of languages, did he adopt, was he able to speak uh, Yoruba, for example? To what extent did he adopt our culture? Well, you know, the, uh, in terms of uh, speaking of language, I, I, I think, uh, I don't think he had much uh, uh, interaction with the, with, the, with the language. But in terms of... Uh, Every other being simple, living a simple life. You know, he, you would when you see a, when you see an academic. You know, there are, there are different kinds of academics you see around. You know, there are some you wonder whether they are bankers, and uh, in terms of their, the way they dress and so on, and the, the way they carry themselves. It was so simple that he removed the barrier between him and students. You could walk to him on the on the road. So so he he defied what it meant to be a big man. In, uh, in the Nigerian context. That's, that's basically what I, what, what, Prof, what I meant. We, you know, we have less time. Uh, uh, it defied we, we have less time. Just let me drop this before we go. What, uh, what are his, you said he didn't have families there. What are the burial arrangements for him like? Any, can we get any idea of what? Well, yes, I, there, is a pro, there is a process, a procedure, and I'm sure that the Department of Classics uh, is He's uh, making all arrangements uh, with, the, with the Faculty of Arts to ensure that he gets uh, the proper, uh, a proper burial. And uh, the, uh, I, I have no doubt that the University of Ibadan will take care, will take care of uh, issues like that. It's, uh, we, 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 it, they are not issues that uh, are, we argue about. But first of all, they will seek uh, uh, to interface with the family. And then, of course, uh, they will do 
exactly what the family deserves, desires uh, that should be done at this point in time. It's something that the University of Ibadan uh, does very, very well. The procedures, the traditions are straightforward, and he will get the proper burial that he deserves. We feel you here, uh, Prof, your loss, and uh, the rest of the University of Ibadan, we can only uh, ask that God give them the uh, grace to bear this huge loss, as it were. Thank you so much, Prof, for being on Newsroom.